This is a Hot Pie Media Original. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the DMP CD Sports Podcast presented by Odd Shark. I'm Chad Fisher alongside my co host, Daytona 500 Farmer. What's happening? <laughs> what's up? Tony Farmer, for those of you who may not know. But hey, Day Tony. Uh, that's that's not that's not on my birth certificate. Oh, it's not. No, that's weird. just on this show. It should be, dude. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Good. How you doing, man? I'm great, man. It's it's like such. This is like this the perfect time for sports. It's like Christmas morning, dude. We got college basketball. There's a lot going on. We got college football, NFL, NBA yeah. started. I've been watching a lot of NBA. My Cavs are doing pretty good. Nice. Uh, I got a four game winning streak going. Um, it's awesome, man. It's so great. There's something on every night. Yeah, it's and beautiful. there's going to be for the next. Four or five months. It's the shit, dude. It's beautiful. One of the topics that are on people's mind right now are that crazy Monday night football game, dude. The terrible yeah. officiating. Tony Carrenti. Um, a lot of people that don't bet don't know this. And I don't know. Um, you, you may know this or not. He, this guy's known for terrible calls. Yeah. Like when betters make bets in games that he's in, people are like, I really like this line. I think I've handicapped it well, but Tony Carrenti's crew has the game. So something crazy might happen. Yeah. So this guy has a history of uh, questionable decision making and uh, that hip check on Monday, which That's he said so after the game, had nothing yeah. to do with him throwing the flag, which I don't believe for a second uh, was pretty ridiculous. Anyways, um, we have Benjamin Albright on the show today, one of our favorite guests. I can't wait to ask him about his take on the officiating for Monday night. Yeah, Benjamin is the shit, man. We had him on when we first started. He was hilarious. Told us a bunch of funny, funny stories. Yeah. Can't wait to get him back on here and talk to him about what's going on in the NFL because he's not just a Broncos guy. He's like an NFL insider now. Yeah, for sure. He's, he's, awesome. he's always got the scoops. Um, he's got a lot of sources. He's hilarious. Uh, he's really a perfect podcast guest. Hilarious. Yeah, he's like perfect for the show, man. We love him on the show. Dude. Yeah, looking forward to that. And then, of course, later in the show, we'll do our uh, Week 10 NFL preview. Uh, maybe talk a little college football as well. Um, very much looking looking forward to that ending of our show too. Yeah, definitely, man. We also love Odd Shark, not just just like Benjamin, right? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, so Odd Shark is your free source for the latest odds from leading authorities and expert editorial content. They got the hottest sports news. They've got detailed matchup picks. They've got in depth expert analysis, and they've got more betting odds, faster live odds, and it's all free. Yeah, it's awesome. Whatever you want to bet on, guys, if it's UFC, if it's boxing, if it's hockey, if it's NFL, any of the stuff that we've talked about, even non-sports stuff. I mean, they'll 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 give you strategy for blackjack. Uh, you can bet on Jeopardy. Um, you can bet on um, what else? Uh, the hot dog eating contest. The Oscars. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're going to give you some angles uh, that you can look at for all this stuff, whether it's entertainment or sports focused. So definitely check out Odd Shark and start thinking like a shark today. And it's a perfect time to play some bets, man. There's all kinds of games going on. So uh, the great thing about Odd Shark is that when you go to Odd Shark, you can find uh, lines from a variety of different sites. So you can make sure you're getting the best number. A lot of these odds change. Over sites, some some numbers some numbers are different on different sites and everything like that. So you want to make sure you're getting the best odds. So make sure you go to Odd Shark. That's O D D S S H A R K dot com. Our guest today is a host, reporter, and analyst for the Denver Broncos flagship station KOA Colorado. You can listen to his interviews on BroncosCountryTonight dot com. He is a favorite guest of our show, probably my favorite guest that we've ever had on the show. Yeah. Hilarious guy. Please welcome to the show. Uh, Denver Broncos insider, NFL insider, draft analyst, Benjamin Albright. Benjamin, how you doing, brother? Thanks for coming on again, man. Oh, I'm doing great. It's great to be back. Uh, Benjamin banging the – you're staying are – you, are you in a minivan in Mobile right now, buddy? Is that where you're at? <laughs> that's, a, that's a callback to my last appearance on this show where, uh, yeah, I, uh, I believe I compared uh, Rob Ryan to uh, Fat Gandalf. Or oh. that show, so I want to go back and listen so to that. So good. Right. Yeah. I forgot about that one. Oh, God. There were so many highlights from that episode yeah. that sometimes I forget, forget about some of them. But yeah. Uh, my first question for you today, Benjamin, a lot of people are talking about Tony Carrente's officiating from that Monday night game last night, the, the hip check, his crew made a ton of mistakes. So who is more incompetent in your, in your opinion, Tony Carrente or Mike Silver, an NFL, uh, <laughs> NFL, uh, network employee who doxes a board operator on Twitter, who is more incompetent of those two? I believe the answer is yes. 
<laughs> Taking the high road. I like it, man. <laughs> uh, Tony Carrenti got caught in 4K, so I guess that gives him a little edge in the overall incompetency since uh, since Mike Silver tried to ninja delete it and then screwed himself a second time posting it. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> so ninja delete it. I love it. I love it. G- going back to the Carrenti thing, I mean, just what was your reaction to, to last night's game overall, assuming you watched it? Yeah, uh, it looked a little bit like, and and I've seen it before, it looked a little bit like a referee might have let his ego kind of get in the way, Um, you know, had players calling him out, didn't like that. He was already, now, I've seen the, you know, the clip, I've seen it multiple times, he he was already grabbing for that flag, like he already had his hand on it, he was already kind of tugging at it, so to me... You know, I think there's a balance here. I think there's a slight overreaction from the public at large in terms of, um, you know, what was going on here. He was already reaching for the flag. At the same time, you know, you kind of see the hip going back there. You see the hip check and the other stuff. And that's an excuse. We can't do that. And then you go back and look at the calls throughout the game. And I I felt like it was a little bit one sided. So, yeah, uh, from my personal opinion, I feel like, you know, if you're the. um, uh, if you're the Bears, you got a bit of a gripe. Um, and, and I did. I felt like uh, the, the NFL is going to have to have a, a sit down and a review with that crew about what it is they want emphasized and when it, when something is emphasized, how to call it properly. There, there's got to be like some accountability for these referees, right? Because a lot of times it feels like they don't do interviews. They don't. Uh, they're not held accountable for the decisions they make. It's kind of like a man behind the curtain type deal. This is this was so egregious. They have to address this, right? I think so. And, and there is an accountability behind the scenes. I mean, the crews have, mm. uh, you know, have scorecards and all that kind of stuff. That, that kind of stuff is, is reviewed. But uh, I think if you're, especially now with the advent of wagering and the outcomes of these games shifting millions of dollars in a lot of cases, uh, I, I think there has to be a public accountability that there hasn't been before for refereeing. Uh, with sports wagering being what it is, like you're going to have people lose faith in the integrity of the product, and, the, and and that is the new revenue stream. They pretty much maxed out broadcasting rights, so the new revenue mm. stream is sports wagering money, and they're cut kind of sports wagering money. If people don't believe they're getting a shake out of the, way, of the sports wagering, they'll go other places, and you know the NFL does not want that. Yeah, very good point. Switching gears a little bit, Benjamin. Uh, a lot of people were shocked at the Broncos' uh, upset win of the Cowboys in Dallas. Um, what was your reaction to that game? Did you see that coming? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, that was the easiest ticket I cashed all year. Oh, wow. um, I, uh, I On the Friday show, we have a little segment on the Friday show where we do the gambling thing. And I, I told uh, I told everybody in the studio, uh, it was myself, Terrell Davis, Rod Smith, a couple of, anyway, I told everybody in the studio, I don't even want the points on this game. Give me the Broncos on the money line. They oh, wow. all laughed at me. Like, wow. all, everybody in there laughed at me at the time. Uh, and then, you know, come back Monday and, uh, I, you know, I, I decided I was going to the office, not even wearing pants. I feel like I was entitled <laughs> at that point. So. Wait, so, so what was it that you liked um, so much about the Broncos side before kickoff? There was an energy after the departure of Von Miller at locker room had, had really deferred to Von and Von is a guy who leads a, a little bit different style. He wants to keep everything loose, keep everything fun. And the problem with that is it led to a lack of serious accountability in that locker room on some mm. things. Some of the younger guys uh, and some of the newer guys, Justin Simmons, Shelby Harris, guys like that wanted to kind of have a, a, a get in your ass accountability kind of, kind of format there in the locker room. And, and now that they've implemented that, the Broncos have won two in a row uh, without Von Miller. So I, I really felt like that, that from that aspect, you were going to have guys that were hyped to play. On the flip side of that, from a tactical standpoint, um, you know, Vic Fangio's defense matched up very well with what uh, Kellen Moore runs on offense. And then on the flip side of that, um, with, with Dan Quinn, we knew that that defense could be run on. You could run on the edge as those ends really don't do a great job setting the edge in a run game. And so that, that's what I was kind of counting on. I was kind of, you know, I, I, a lot of that was hoping that Pat Shermer, uh, or as I refer to him as uh, Punch Shermer, uh, would stick <laughs> with the run game. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it worked. And so he did stick with it. And, and ultimately, that's what led to the big Denver win. Well, we, we are a sports betting show. And I've got to ask, since, uh, since you were able to get that big upset of the Broncos last week, anybody you like, this upcoming week for week 10, have you looked at the lines yet? Uh, a few of them. Uh, if you want to, if you want to bet Denver against Philly, you're, you're, you're safe there. Um, nice. I'd have to go back and look at some of the other lines here real quick. I, I generally kind of wait, uh, at this point in the season, I generally sort of wait till, till closer to Friday where I get some more information on injuries. Who's going to play, who's not going to play kind of, nice. and kind of see if I can get a more favorable. I mean, unless there's an initial line that jumps out at me, is just, just strikingly favorable. I tend to wait just because you never know who's going to show up late in an injury report. If you haven't already heard and 
you don't want to, you know, you don't want to hose yourself on a bet because, uh, uh, because Russell Wilson is going to be playing or, and he is going to be playing this week, by the way, but, but you, you get the point. Or with COVID now, I think that's even, even better advice now because you, someone right. could get a COVID positive test on Friday or Saturday. Right, right. So that's that's generally I've generally uh, at this point in the season. Early on in the season, I tend to kind of hammer those lines early. Later on in the season, once we get to the midpoint, I, I start to sit back a little bit and, and and become information guy rather than gut feeling guy. I like it, uh, Benjamin. I want to ask you about somebody that you've been in on for a while now, Tim Patrick. You've said on your show that he is a first string wide receiver and he's got a one fifty six point three passer rating when targeted in man coverage, highest among all wide receivers. What was it about him that you saw going into the season? that you uh, kind of predicted he's going to have such a big year. Well, it was last season, actually, um, in training camp. You could just see this was a dude that has felt disrespected his whole career, a guy who injuries mounted up, so he didn't, uh, you know, he obviously wasn't uh, selected with the the draft pick that, that obviously he thought he deserved. And then, you know, you watch him get cut from a couple of teams and everything like that. He's just got a big chip on his shoulder. Uh, and he's a guy that, uh, that, you know, that wants to prove all those people wrong. And, you know, watching him, um, you know, come out his work ethic and, and all that kind of stuff, and then watching him, um, you know, want to prove all these people wrong. You just see it's, it's more than just talent. There's a desire there. And some guys, you know, they, they kind of rest back on the, on the athleticism and the things that they've accomplished, but this is a dude that, that seeks to outdo himself every day. And he plays with passion. Uh, he plays with intensity and then, you know, it doesn't hurt that you're six, five and you're on a four, four. So, um, that, you know, I think, uh, I, I think just looking at that, seeing it live in training camp, you could just kind of see it. It just kind of popped off the, you know, it just kind of jumped out at you and, you know, he's a guy that uh, he's going to get top 15 wide receiver money. Like him and Cortland Sutton are both up for contracts. I don't think the Broncos can afford to keep both of them. Uh, and they're both going to wind up with top 15 wide receiver money this this coming off season. Mm-hmm. So um, based on what I've heard, wouldn't be surprised if New Orleans uh, went after Tim Patrick as a replacement for Michael Thomas. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll see if that pans out. I want to ask you about Von Miller's Halloween party. You brought him up earlier. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of rumors out there. What, what I think we know to be true um, is that Von Miller throws this Halloween party every year. Noah Fant has publicly said that there was some drama about whether or not the party would be canceled uh, before Halloween. Um, And then uh, there's also rumors out out there about the financial aspects of this party and that he was uh, allegedly uh, asking people for money. What can you tell us about this Halloween party and how much of that is is true? Okay, well, Von Miller's trade had nothing to do with the Halloween party and the front (laughs) office and coaches didn't know anything about the 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 behind-the-scenes stuff. Okay, As far as the the behind-the-scenes stuff go, Von Miller... Um, Vaughn was a little hesitant because of the losing streak, you know, he didn't want to, he didn't want to get out there. He thought there was bad optics, mm. uh, but you know, this is a tradition. And a lot of the guys, uh, it, it kind of intimated to him, Hey, this is a traditional thing. It helps keep the guys loose. This is, this is probably a good thing for the locker room. So Vaughn was like, all right, I'm willing to do it. Um, but with all the stuff that we want to do this year, maybe, uh, if we can get some people to chip in, so I'm not covering the whole thing. Um, you know, then maybe, uh, we make it a group effort. It's not Von Miller's Halloween party. It's, it's a, it's a Denver Broncos Halloween party. So that was discussed in a, in a group chat in text. And, uh, that was kind of tentatively orally agreed to. And then the party came, the bill came due Von paid it. And when he went to recoup some of that money from some of these guys, uh, some of them balked at paying. And that was sort of a problem for Vaughn, uh, who thought that everybody was going to chip in $3,800. The vets thought that they were the only ones that were going to pay. Um, you know, guys that didn't go, didn't feel like they were supposed to pay, things like that. So it, it really, what happened is one disgruntled defensive player leaked that to the press, and, and that's what went from there. The reality was each person was supposed to pay $3,800, hardly a huge sum. It wasn't like yeah. it was a princely sum or anything. Right. Uh, and part of that was for the entertainment because they had Quavo coming in to perform and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, in the end, everybody reimbursed Vaughn, and, and that was that. Uh, the vets that, you know, took care of the rookies on that one. But, you know, it, it, in the end, it really wasn't as big a deal as it was made out to be. Gotcha. What are your expectations for him uh, in Los Angeles now? I think it'd be good. He was fifth in the NFL uh, in in quarterback pressures prior to the Washington game at Denver, where he, he didn't play. I mean, you know, he was he was fifth in the league in pressures. He had a few sacks. He was I, I'm not he's not prime Von Miller, but he's no slouch either. You know, he's certainly a, a top twenty five percent of the league pass rusher. So. Um, and teams, you know, didn't really respect the other pass rushers the Broncos had. They were sliding coverage on Vaughn, basically triple teaming him. You'd have a tight end and a back chipping him, and they'd slide protection that side. Vic Fangio started taking advantage of that. He was blitzing uh, Alexander Johnson through the, you know, through the A gaps. So he started blitzing Caden Stearns. You can see those guys picked up a few sacks uh, that way. But 
Um, you know, I, I think both parties are better off for what happened in the end. Von will end up making the Rams better. I mean, you know, what was it? Dante Fowler had like 11 sacks uh, rushing with, with Aaron Donald, yeah. you know, right there. I can't even, you know, the, the ghost of Von Miller's worth more than the, the, the live Dante Fowler. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, I think, I think that'll, uh, I think ultimately Von will come away with uh, having a productive end of the year, probably parlay that into one last big deal and go from there. Uh, so after that big upset of the Cowboys, which you called, uh, do you think that and, and them getting rid, uh, the Broncos get rid of uh, trading Von Miller? Do you think that this is going to be a new team now coming up? Uh, you got some, you got the Eagles this weekend, totally uh, winnable game. Uh, do you think that they turned the corner, or is this just that was just a great matchup with them with the Cowboys? I think we're about to find out. Um, you know, I think the Eagles are a winnable game. You win that game, all of a sudden you're on a three game win streak going to the bye week, and that's where the meteor schedule comes up because you got the Chargers and Chiefs right afterwards. So, you know, we will know by Thanksgiving whether this Broncos team is for real or whether this was just a, a quick barrage. And, you know, it's interesting because Vic Fangio's job hinges on him making the playoffs. And so, you know, people were already counting him out prior to the, you know, the prior to the Dallas game, they were already looking ahead to other coaches. And interestingly enough, one of the names mentioned or two of the names mentioned were Kellen Moore and Dan Quinn. So uh -huh. he may have wanted to kind of uh, be a little extra spicy in that game and put it to him <laughs> since, uh, since they were the rumored replacements. My last question is the AFC West wide open. I mean, the chargers now look vulnerable. Their run defense for sure. The chiefs obviously aren't what a lot of people thought they were. If the Broncos do prove by Thanksgiving that they're legitimate, is this division wide open where they could actually win the AFC West? Is that a possibility? Oh, very much so. Every team in the AFC West currently has five wins. Uh, mm -hmm. They're all four and five wins. Now the Chargers and uh, I believe the Raiders have each played one fewer game. Um, but, you know, the reality is it's it's wide open. And the Broncos still have, I believe, uh, every uh, division game but one left. So and when you play in division, you know, win almost counts as double because, you know, you're playing yep. well, that you're, the team you're playing picks up a loss. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, I, th I think the AFC West is wide open. The Broncos could certainly win it. The Chiefs, uh, their defense is, is terra bad this year, and their offensive line had gelled. Uh, you look at the Raiders and all the problems they've had. They just, you know, they keep hemorrhaging players. And I don't know, you know, I, eventually that becomes, I, I think, that it's going to become too much uh, for them to overcome. And then you've got uh, uh, the Chargers, who over the last, I don't know, four weeks or so looked very, very beatable. Uh, yeah. You know, look, look figured out. So, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think the division is wide, wide open. It's going to be interesting to see. Do you have a prediction? Can you give us a prediction of what you think is going to happen? Obviously, it's going to be a dogfight. Everybody's kind of uh, bunched together there. No one's really established himself as a clear-cut favorite. As you mentioned, the Chiefs, I mean, they just look like hell. You and Tony and I kind of predicted that this year. They're going to take a massive step back. I don't think we anyone could have foresaw the step that they've taken back. But it's wide open right now. And you guys, uh, like you said, you got all the divisional matchups coming up. You got the Eagles. Uh, you also have the Lions in a couple of weeks uh, in between uh, the Chargers and the, and the uh, Chiefs. What's your prediction on how the season ends for this uh, this uh, division here? Well, my gut says go with Kansas City just because of the experience. You know, uh, Kansas City's been there. They've done it. Uh, and, and, you know, for a team that's done that, it's usually easier to dig out. Um, yeah. You know, the Raiders and the Chargers, they haven't. Uh, Denver has, but it hasn't been recent. I mean, the only guy left on this team from the Super Bowl era is Brandon McManus, the kicker now. So mm. um, that's, you know, they, they haven't recently. That said, Denver, I believe, has the easiest schedule going forward by far because you've got the Bengals, the Lions, the Eagles. Uh, you've got some bad teams on mm -hmm. there just because you're playing a last place schedule. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's going to be KC or Denver. Uh, I put my money on KC, but uh, don't don't count Denver out. I mean, maybe they rally around this, you know, this this thing. They say Vic Fangio and and. Oh, God, help us patch Dermer's job and, uh, you know, and, and go from there. Awesome. Hey, last time you were on our show, we sent you a bottle of whiskey. And I want to ask you, uh, how, how did you enjoy that, man? I finally got around to drinking that. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> uh, it was fantastic. Uh, uh, some friends and I, we had uh, we went out camping. We had a bonfire. I took it out there with us. Uh, it was fantastic. So uh, thank you guys very much for that. Uh, that whiskey it was uh, it was phenomenal uh and uh yes you could pay me in whiskey anytime hey, you, you got another <laughs> bottle coming for sure from still austin thank you so much for yeah. your time ben we really appreciate He's the you, best man. man you can follow him on uh twitter at albright nfl one of the funniest guys we've had on the show one of the funniest guys in sports in my opinion and he knows his stuff man which is awesome too absolutely thank ben, you we really so appreciate much. it brother thanks for coming on absolutely guys take, take care, care man. take it easy brother Benjamin Albright, uh, Broncos and NFL insider. Awesome guy, dude. So funny, man. I love having that. I could talk to that dude like literally every show, man. Yeah, seriously. God, he's fucking awesome. Yeah, great guy. Um, I was really surprised that he uh, he was all over the Broncos. I, yeah. I, everybody that I knew that I'm close to that follow sports were absolutely shocked by that Cowboys win. But his rationale for why he was on the Broncos 
makes total sense. And frankly, I wish I had, I wish I was paying closer attention yeah. to the Broncos uh, because I feel like I may, may have been able to uh, make a little money on that inside information. Mm-hmm. Uh, not even really inside information, more just like reading the tea leaves yeah, yeah. Of, of what was happening with that team. Um, that was fascinating to me. Dude, that guy knows his stuff, man. He, he's a great insider. I feel like uh, in a couple of years, we're going to be talking about him as one of the biggest sports writers in the country. Guys plugged in, man. You, you, he knew everything about that Von Miller situation. The dollar to amount? A the $3,800 amount? To a T. This guy yeah. knows his stuff. He's plugged in. And you can see why he gets this information because he's funny. He's cool. Um, he's He works hard. Uh, people trust him with the, with uh, this type of information because he's such a cool guy. And I think he's just going to blow up, man. Since we've had him on the show, he's gotten even bigger. Yeah. And I don't know. these Because big networks, we had him on the show. Yeah, right? yeah. It was I, all it us. Was all us. We, <laughs> we definitely gave him that karma and everything. <laughs> but uh, I think that I don't understand how this guy hasn't got scooped up by a bigger network, man. You know what I yeah, mean? I feel yeah. like uh, it's only a matter of time before this guy is going to be on everybody's television set. He's way too funny. Uh, way too gregarious not to be, man. One of my favorite guys in sports. And and I asked him about Mike Silver, and he got a little bit of a dig in. So so so, but he he, he mainly took the high yeah, road yeah, there. Yeah. So for those of you who aren't familiar, you can go on Twitter and you can see some of the I'll say banter uh, back and forth between Ben and Mike Silver. Mike Silver called Ben a wannabe, um, and then Ben fired back with some great comebacks. And it was it was very public, and it was sort of a back and forth. Um, so that was the context, just so, so people that, that might not be familiar with. Um, I was going to say, Mike Silver is the guy that used to work for the NFL Network, kind yes. of a boob, kind of like, He ah, left in October, yeah. Ah, hi, 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 hi. Yeah. He talks exactly like that. I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a drunk Harry Carey or some shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, so that boob uh, went after Albright, and it didn't turn out too well for him. No, no, not at all, <laughs> not at all. And we were definitely on Team Albright firing course, out some, man. Some, some tweets around that yeah, time as definitely. well. Um, but it was uh, it, it was a showdown. It's kind of quieted down a little bit, which is maybe why Ben didn't want to yeah. totally reopen yeah, yeah, that yeah. can because it is, is cool. It is in a good place. But for it's sure. hilarious because he called him a wannabe, and now this guy's working for. Like rallies, you said. I, I don't even know. I don't even know the name. I don't even know the name of the company we that joking, he's working for. We were joking before the show. We're like, uh, rallies? What the hell is that? Is this, did, did Hardee's not offer or something? What the hell's going on, man? Was Checkers like just, they, they was like, this is too rich, too rich for our blood. Yeah, Jimmy Johns, they need to get on that, man. <laughs> have, a, have you a Mike Silver, you know what I mean? But but we, we've got Ben's back, no matter uh, who he's having beef with on Twitter. Not not that it happens too often, but we've got his back. Yeah. Uh, we love us some Benjamin Albright on this show, that's for sure. And as we've said, if you haven't seen our first interview with yeah. Ben, which was, I think, our second or third episode ever, yeah, yeah. Uh, make sure you go and listen to that because it was extended. It was, I think we had him for almost a full hour. You really got to see his personality. And, and you, it's difficult to walk away from that interview not loving Benjamin Albright because it was hilarious. Hilarious. Just a hilarious. Some of the best uh, sound bites from our show. And also what we love about this guy also, man, is that he gave us a chance when we were just starting out, when yeah. we didn't have any guests. Uh, we had all, had Austin Eckler at that time. But that was it. You know what I mean? Yep. We didn't have John Stockton. We didn't have Jesse Zapolu. We didn't have Muhammad Sanu. Yep. We didn't have these guys, all the coaches that we've had on the show. So he gave us a chance, an opportunity. When we were just starting out, we were nobodies. I mean, we're still nobodies, but you know what I mean? <laughs> we're slightly above nobody. You know what I mean? So yeah, shout out to Benjamin. You can follow him on uh, Twitter at Albright NFL. That's A-L-L-B-R-I-G-H-T NFL. Also check out broncoscountrytonight.com. Uh, he is an insider, NFL insider, Broncos insider. As you can tell, he's got all the insider information. If you're a Broncos yeah. fan or just an ASC West fan and you want to get some uh, insider knowledge, go check out Benjamin, man. Yeah, and his Twitter page is great because he, he does do a little bit of wagering as well, and he'll post some of his bets on his Twitter page. I've even seen him talk about cryptocurrency a little bit and kind of give give away some recommendations for cryptocurrency uh, investing. Maybe I shouldn't use the word recommendation, but you know, letting you know how he, he's... Uh, He's voting with his dollar with cryptocurrencies. Um, and then obviously the NFL information on there is is second to none as well. So definitely give him a follow um, we, on Twitter. Unfortunately, when you get to talk to him about the uh, Nikola Jokic uh, body check on uh, on uh, Morris, uh, I don't know, Marcus Morris uh, last night. Mm. That was awesome, by the mm. way. Did you see it? I didn't see it. Oh, no. dude, it was the shit. Marcus Morris, the Morris brothers, the twins. They're kind of assholes, you know? I don't know if you know anything about them. No, no. But there's a not a rumor. It's verified that they, like, beat the hell out of some guy and put him in a wheelchair and shit. They're just, Jeez. like, straight up gangsters. These motherfuckers don't give a shit. Wow. And they're always, like, trying to intimidate other players on other teams and stuff. And it's really frustrating. It's really annoying. No one's ever checked these motherfuckers before. Mm. So last night in the game um, against the, the – uh, 
uh, uh, just uh, slip my mind. Nuggets. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's at Denver. Game's out of control. I think Denver's up by uh, 15, 20 points. And Jokic is coming across half court with the ball. Marcus Morris kind of lays a shoulder into him. Way too, way too physical. He got pissed off. And so right after he lays a shoulder into him, Jokic just throws the ball down and just head hunts this dude and just body checks him onto the ground. Marcus Morris is on the ground like in actual pain and everything. Oh, wow. Of course, Jokic, they both got uh, ejected from the game. But it was just awesome to see someone finally stand up to one of these assholes, you know. Damn. Is that on our Twitter feed? Uh, it will be. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, Damn, yeah. I, I, I miss that completely. I'm but Marcus Morris that. got what came to him. And the one thing that's also funny is that Jokic has two brothers that are just badasses. These guys are like, you know, Jokic's over seven foot. His brother's like six, eight, six, nine. And they're just like built like brick shit houses, man. These guys are huge. And so they're going after him on, on Twitter as well, threatening Jeez. him and stuff like that. Supposedly Marcus Morris threatened Jokic on Twitter. And then his brothers came to his defense and said, hey, you know, anytime, anywhere, buddy. You know, so uh, they don't give a shit, man. <laughs> they don't care. He said, if you want to step uh, f- uh, further, be sure we will we will be waiting for you. Jokic brothers. They signed it like they're just like some mob boss family Jeez. or some shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, so, oh, man. Hey, sp- speaking of the NBA, man, we really haven't talked a lot about the NBA on this show so far. What are your thoughts about how the season's gone dude, so far? Who, who do you like in the finals? I know it's way too early, but I'm still curious what your thoughts are. It, it's going to be a great season, I think. I think that this is going to be one of the best NBA seasons we've had in a long time. Because there's been a changing in the guard. Yep. The LeBron, unfortunately, for Lakers fans and everything like that, I do feel like he has taken a step back. Uh, even when he's been healthy this year, his numbers are down all across the board. He can't stay healthy, man, right now. And it's really sad to see. Father Time is undefeated. And it happens to everybody. But LeBron has not been himself. And that that Lakers team, they're right around 500 right now. I don't feel like – I feel like they're going to be lucky to make the playoffs this year. Because mm-hmm. I don't think the injury bug has really hit, the, hit them – as hard as it's going to uh, for this upcoming season. They got a lot of a lot of old guys on that team. Carmelo Anthony has played really well this year, having a great season um, in that or- organization. But LeBron can't stay healthy, and if they can't keep him healthy, if the AD's had a history with injuries, uh, we had Trevor Lane on the show a few months ago. He talked about that, whereas AD actually isn't as injury-prone as a lot of people think he is. Yeah. But the rest of that, that squad is. You know, you got a lot of old guys on that team. Dwight Howard hasn't been playing very well. I think he's averaging four and four this year. Uh, so it's wide open. It looks like the Bucks are a little bit tired. They've also had Chris Middleton out for uh, a variety of reasons. They've had some injuries. They've had some COVID issues and everything like that. But it's wide open, dude. And to illustrate that, the Cavs, my favorite team, obviously, they're looking really good right now. They're seven and four. Um, they play tomorrow night, Wednesday night uh, at home. They, all of the, they've only had three home games up to this point eight road games, and all of those games have been against playoff teams. Mm. The one exception being the Toronto Raptors, who are a playoff team this year. So they've essentially faced all playoff teams. They're seven and four, which is no one saw coming. They've been underdogs in every single game they played this year. Um, And they look really good, man. They just beat a a Knicks team on the road at New York, and it wasn't really close. They they was close a little bit in the fourth quarter. New York made a little bit of a comeback, cut it to six a couple times. I think they cut it to two as well at one time, but the – the, the Cavs just had too much firepower. They got a lot of guys that can that can score now. We've got – honestly, dude, I could see us having seven or eight guys to average in double figures this year, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. They've, they All of a sudden now they've got a lot of assets. Uh, Evan Mobley's been an amazing rookie. That guy is going to be an animal. He's going to be a player like we've never seen in the NBA before. He's going to yeah. be a guy that can run the floor, that can uh, start the break. A lot of times when he gets rebounds, they everyone else just takes off. He's, he's starting the break. He's bringing the ball up the floor sometimes in fast break situations or uh, defensive rebound situations. He's been a godsend, man. It's great to have a rookie that's really, really – I mean, he, he in any other year, he would have been a number one pick. We had yeah. Amari Sankofa on the show, Detroit Pistons insider, a few months ago, and he said the same thing. That guy – or actually, Jordan Zerm, I believe, said this mm. that we had on. He said any other year, that guy's a number one pick. Yeah. He was the third pick this year. And what's been encouraging for uh, Cavs fans, at least for me – is uh, Jalen Green, a guy that a lot of people thought we uh, got away from us. We wanted him. I was kind of on that same boat. You know, he went at number two to the Rockets. He hasn't had a good year. He's shooting 35% from the field this year. Not looking great. The Rockets are one and nine. Their season's pretty much over already before it Mm. started. Ten games in, they're done. They're looking for lottery odds already. Hmm. So it's been a great season so far. 
It's good if you look at the in the East standings and the West standings. There's a lot. Of course, it's only been ten games, so a lot of those teams are clustered together. But nobody's really set themselves apart as like this is the go to uh, number one team in the league. Yeah. This is where the the championship goes through. So that we're going to see. Is nice. Yeah. Finally, in the NBA, we're going to see some amazing parity, and I do believe that we're going to see this for many years to come. That's good. We had we had that whole you know LeBron, uh, those types of guys that were running the league for 10, 15 years, twenty years in LeBron's case. And now that era is over. Now yep. we're starting to see these new players come up. And I think there's going to be a lot of surprise teams this year. And it's going nice. to be awesome. It's going to be fun because that's one of, the, one of the biggest knocks on the NBA is that there's no parity. Every year it's the same teams. Everybody got tired of that shit. I did yeah. too, you know. And so I didn't mind it when it was the Cavs. <laughs> but now <laughs> not so much. But it's going to be an awesome season, man. But a lot of parity this year. Remember LeBron's uh, social media post? I, I don't remember if it was Twitter or Instagram uh, before the year started where he was like, yeah, okay, I'm washed. Yeah, yeah. That might not age yeah, well because yeah. uh, you might actually be washed there, LeBron. There's and you kind of said that sarcastically, but uh, perhaps uh, that's not going to look so good. There's a lot of miles on that odometer, man. You yeah. know, he's played a lot of basketball in his career, you know, every year going deep in the playoffs, going to the NBA finals, you know, as much as he has. Uh, it, it, it's if Father Time is undefeated, man. You yeah. know what I mean? And I do think that this is a year. Is, is LeBron, this would be a good a good bet. Is LeBron over under 50 games this year? Is he going to play 50 games yeah, this year? no shit. You know I'll what tell I mean? you what he can count on. And, and Michael Jordan, people don't want to hear this, but Michael Jordan had this toward the end of his career as well. The officials for an icon like that mm -hmm. late in his career yeah. when he's starting to slip a tiny, yep. tiny bit, yep. uh, the officials start to be a little more friendly toward yeah. those icons. And then you just end up getting a lot of points at the free throw line. Yeah. Uh, Averaging so, like 10 a game from the line or something like yeah, that. LeBron's so, not as good a free throw shooter as Jordan was. Good point. And he's got to get on the court, first of all, yeah, to even get those yeah. free throws. I don't know, man. I, I, if I'm a Lakers fan, I would be super, super worried. I would have been worried coming into the season. It seems like a lot of Lakers fans on Twitter try to talk themselves into this this uh, this rotation and, and the guys on the team. All those guys. We got Ray John Rondo playing backup you know, uh, point guard minutes. Uh, you got Dwight Howard who looks washed as well. Yep. Uh, I don't feel like their bench is that that great, you know. Yeah. So uh, – it's going to be the year. I said on my, my Twitter, at Tony's Health Tips, by the way, my personal Twitter, I said, and I was mouthing off because I was very frustrated with the 49ers on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I said, is there a worse investment in sports than 49ers season tickets? And someone yeah. replied, LA Lakers season tickets. Yeah. I was like, eh, That's fair. a great point. And those <laughs> are way more expensive than <laughs> yeah, the exactly. 49ers tickets, I'm sure. Exactly. Um, it, yeah, dude. That's funny. I do the same thing when, the, when uh, like Michigan football loses. Oh, I'm an asshole. Oh, dude. dude I, I had like 16 tweets in a row. And oh, then yeah. my last one was like, Hey, I got a little frustrated today with the 49ers and I said some really nasty things. And um, after some reflection, a few hours have passed. I meant every single word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, you didn't want to see me two weeks ago when Michigan got beat by Michigan State Ooh, after having yeah. a 16 point I gave lead. You some time to cool down after and that one. getting screwed in that yeah. game. Supposedly, <clears throat> uh, Jim Harwell came out this week in his press conference on Monday and said that they sent a bunch of tape to the Big Ten office complaining about a lot of egregious, mm. egregious calls in that game that would have totally changed the complexion of the game, one being when we were up by 16 points. Uh, it looked like we were just teeing off on them. Uh, the defense, Our defensive line was just literally dominating their offensive line. I thought to myself, honestly, I've seen a lot of sporting events and everything like that, so I never get too ahead of myself and say, oh, this game's over. But that's what it felt like as a fan. I was sitting there thinking, this game's over. It's, yeah. we're, we are manhandling these guys on both sides of the ball. We're going to end up winning this game by 30. At that point, I really did think we were going to win by 30. I thought it was a blowout. Uh, up 30 to 14, <clears throat> uh, David Ojaba comes around the corner, just blows past the left tackle, and the Michigan fans in stadium, as soon as he beat the left tackle, just erupted because they knew what was coming because the quarterback did not see him. He comes in, just lays a good lick on the guy. Uh, ball comes out, clearly out before he hits the ground. Uh, ball was recovered by Aiden Hutchinson in the end zone for a touchdown. We would have been up by 23 right there. Game's effectively over at this point. I can go for a while, dog. Uh, game's effectively over at this point. And then here comes the old dumbass referees to screw Jim Harbaugh one more time, you know? Yeah. And so they go look at the tape. I don't I'm sitting there thinking, why is this taking so long? The ball is yeah. clearly coming out. And they come back, and then I thought to myself about halfway through the review, I said, they're going to end up screwing us out of this. Because yeah. what they do to Jim Harbaugh, they hate Jim Harbaugh. He never gets any calls, you know. When he was with the 49ers, he would do the same thing. He'd send tape to, yeah. to league officials. And maybe a lot of coaches do this, but I don't hear of a lot of coaches mm -hmm. doing this. And what kind of effect do you think that has? Because in games, I 100% believe in makeup calls. Yeah. I think that that happens yeah, yeah, oftentimes, right? And that's a thing. Is there like a week-to-week -week makeup call thing where if... I don't think there is, but if the league is like, well, yeah, 
Jim is right. We really did screw him this time where you're going to actually get some better calls next time. Like, like what, what does that do besides your ego f- to like sort of put the league on notice that they screwed you? What effect does that really have to send them tape and be like, look, you messed up. It doesn't seem to make any difference because the, the uh, Jim Harbaugh has been doing that for as long as he's been in Michigan and we still get screwed out of calls. And I'm not the person. I'm not going to be that guy that says, like, oh, the referees and blame everything on that. But if you're a Michigan fan and you've watched them over the last eight years, seven, eight years since Jim Harbaugh's been there, this is a definite thing. We get screwed in every game. You, We have to be good enough to beat the officials and the, the, the team that we're playing. And frankly, we're just not good enough. There are teams that are Ohio State, but they never really have to go through that. So many egregious calls in that 2016 matchup against Ohio State. They had one penalty for five yards. I still remember this shit five All right, years I, later. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a message out here to Twitter because I do not follow Michigan football nearly as closely to Chad, nearly as closely as Chad. And I'm having a hard time differentiating if what Chad is saying is legitimate and Michigan is actually getting screwed really bad or if Chad is just like every other football fan who is like, my team's getting screwed by the refs, it's not fair. So if you're listening to this on Twitter and you're a Michigan fan, I want you to reply, or if you're not, and tell me if this is legitimate or not. Just because I, I trust you, Chad, yeah. but I also know that we all got our, our fandom heart going it's and we, a- we see what we want to see sometimes. So I'm like... I, I, it's going to be a barrage of comments if we open it up to that because I don't think anyone could could disagree with me. Now, a lot of people in, in uh, Michigan fandom have been a little disappointed with Jim Harbaugh, but I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of games could have swung one way or the other. Now he is two and twelve and, and against top five teams. Uh, that's not great, you know what I mean. But if you go back to that 2016 game against Ohio State, number one and two in the country, this game is four. Who gets to go to the college football mm-hmm. playoff? Who's going to win the Big Ten? One penalty for five yards. We had one of the best defensive lines in Michigan football history that year. Uh, Chris Wormley, uh, a bunch of other guys on that defensive line that we just dominated. We dominated everybody that entire season. One penalty for five yards that entire game. An offsides penalty <laughs> five, on, on Ohio five State. Five years ago, and yeah. you're still fired up. I love it because I can relate because we'll go back to, to Jim Harbaugh yeah. again. The game against uh, the Ravens, remember when mm-hmm. the lights went out yeah, at yeah. halftime and all that? Um, I still say that was holding. Yeah. Um, or defensive pass interference at the goal line there. Um, that last play of the game. Uh, ironically, another game involving Harbaugh, but that mm. was even longer ago than five years ago. Yeah. That was like seven or eight or nine years yeah, yeah. ago, and I still lose sleep over that one. So I'm still I, I pissed you. off about it, dude. I still it took. It, I probably didn't get over the Michigan State. Well, I still haven't gotten over it, but uh, it took me probably three or four days where you hate it, you know, because you don't want to watch sports, which is one of my favorite things in the world to do. One of my favorite things in my yeah. life to do is to watch sports. <laughs> And I didn't want to watch sports for two or three days. I don't even think I watched the Browns the next day. I think I no, I did play Pittsburgh, and then I just get we got beat by Pittsburgh. And I'm like, all oh, my teams suck. This is annoying, dude. I get so tired. But uh, we had a bounce back win last week uh, against Indiana. But I don't know what it is, man. I don't know if Jim Harbaugh smashed one of the referees' wives or something like that, or like the head referee's <laughs> wife, or she's got a crush on him, or she used to have a poster some, of him in her room. Some people think Jim's unlikable. I mean, he has a, he he has a, a personality that some people can find abrasive. And um, I wouldn't be shocked if if that's something too. I mean, is he? I mean, a lot of coaches are like that, though. You know True. what I mean? You have to be kind of a a, a psycho to be a, a head coach yeah, at any level, yeah. at, at any high level in college football or uh, NFL. True. It's just weird to me that they've like picked on him so much, and he's toned it down, man. The first couple of years in Michigan, he was very uh, outgoing and scream and yell. I mean, he mm. would do like antics on the sideline. He's calmed that down way, way, uh, or big time. In fact, so much so that a lot of people in the Michigan uh, community are saying they want the old Jim Harbaugh back, so it has some fire and everything. Mm. And so, and this uh, Jim Harbaugh is winning, so let's keep this one. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> man. And so we'll see, man. Well, this is obviously a big year. Uh, luckily, Michigan State got beat last week by Purdue, which uh, leaves uh, Michigan. All of our goals are still on the table. Obviously, we got to beat Ohio State, which is you know, I give us about a ten percent, five percent chance of that happening, but. We still have all of our goals, you know what I'm saying? And if we can if we can win out going up against a house going into a house state at the end of the month, that sets up for an old school Michigan House State game. The winner of that is gonna be the Big Ten champion or go to Indianapolis at least. So it's gonna be interesting to see. And with that, let's uh transition. We're gonna we're gonna do a couple we did this last week, we're gonna do this uh again this week. We're gonna do a couple uh, college football lines before we go into. I love it. Before we go into the NFL. Yeah, speaking of Ohio State, what were you telling me right before we went? Yeah, there? so uh, we're gonna get to that. Uh, Ohio State is a twenty-point favorite this week. They're at home against Purdue. I think that is a massive, massive spread. It's twenty across the board on every site here. 
that we've got on oddshark.com. Uh, I can't believe that spread is that high. I would have I would have suspected something around maybe nine to eleven, wow. somewhere around there. Can't believe it's twenty. I would get on that. I would jump on that as soon as possible. Ohio State has not looked great. Uh, maybe this is wishful thinking, but they struggled with Nebraska a little bit last week. I felt like Nebraska was a player two away from making that a real game. Um, they haven't looked great in the last few weeks. Penn State took them to the wire as well. Um, those that was probably a bad matchup for them. But Purdue, if you do remember, a few years ago. Beat the hell out of Ohio State. I think it was forty one. Purdue's 17. had several upsets over the years. They have, I mean, they're they're a team that has upset some some ranked teams on a number of occasions. They actually, to go with that point, they have beaten a top five team seventeen times. Damn. In their history, most in college football history by far. I did not know that. Damn. By far, seventeen top five wins for Purdue. Wow. They're going to have another opportunity this week because they're going to be going up against Ohio State, mm. who is in the top five as well. Um, that's a 20 point spread. I can't believe it's that high. That is outrageous to me. I would take Purdue in this all day long. Does Ohio State have the firepower to make that a blowout? Yeah, of course. But I think Purdue has a lot of really good players on that team. Uh, they they threw for over 500 yards, uh, uh, passing last week against a good Michigan State team defense. Now Michigan State secondary isn't that great, but I think they ran for less than 50 or 60 yards. But they mm. threw for over 500. And so I don't think Ohio State's uh, defensive backfield is that great, and I think they're going to take advantage of that matchup. It is in Columbus, but 20 points is just a lot. I can't believe it's that high. That's, uh, that's egregious to me. Uh, next big game on the schedule is Michigan, my Michigan Wolverines at Penn State. Happy this is a noon game and not a night game, a whiteout or something like that. Mm-hmm. Everybody's all coked up and juiced up and <laughs> you know sneaking in moonshine and whatever the hell they do over there in <laughs> rural, rural Pennsylvania. <laughs> but... Um, it opened at uh, Michigan as two and a half point favorites. Now it's anywhere from uh, Michigan, a uh, one point favorite to even. So mm. it's a pick 'em. So uh, this is a really tough game, man. I don't, I don't, I'm not too confident about this. Uh, actually, if you go, if you go to oddshark.com, it's anywhere from Michigan one point favorite to a one point underdog, actually, on a, a one site here. So. Who's a pick them? You know what I mean? So, uh, so some sites have Michigan as a one point favorite. Some some sites have them as a one point underdog. Yeah. So we, some we, of them have even. So so what you could do, okay, is and I love I love this here because I I don't generally like to bet teasers in college football because the, the 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 scores are a little more volatile. But what you could do is do a six point teaser on Michigan as a one point underdog and get Michigan plus seven. Um, and then you go on the other side plus seven on another site that you find through Odd Shark, and now you've got both teams plus seven. Mm-hmm. And if it's a close game, you win both bets. Yeah. And you just end up watching that game, rooting for the score not to get away from either team. Yeah. Um, and so that's something that uh, you should, I think, feel pretty good about. I can see this game going either way. Obviously, I'm going to bet with my heart, <laughs> as I do sometimes. I think Michigan is a much better team than Penn State. Obviously, there's a lot of factors in this game. Uh, it's at Penn State. Um, Penn State does have a really good defense. If Michigan can run the ball, keep their uh, keep their uh, defense off the field, um, kind of take over that game in the fourth quarter against Penn State, kind of wear them down, and then start churning out yards. Blake Corum went out with an injury last week. Uh, the thunder and lightning of the Michigan backfield. Um, he is the uh, the lightning, the quick, also powerful, uh, small back. But he can take it the distance in a heartbeat. He, uh, Jim Harbaugh did say at his press conference yesterday that he will be healthy and playing for this game mm. this weekend. So that's a big uh, boost for the for the offense. Kate McNamara looked really good uh, against Michigan State. That was the best game I've seen him play. You put up 33 points in a rivalry game, you should win that game. You should win it by a touchdown at least. And so he looked really good. It feels like if you, if you allow him to open up the offense, allow him to uh, get comfortable back there, he can make plays, man. The guy had amazing accuracy, you know. And so... Uh, I think Michigan has a better offense, and I think that that we do have a better defense. So I will take Michigan. I like your idea about the teaser, but I would just go ahead straight money line. That's what this bet's going to be anyway, sure. is I would just take Michigan on the road. I think they're going to win by three or four on the road. I think they'll wear down that uh, Penn State defense in the second half, and then kind of in the fourth quarter kind of take control of that. At least I'm hoping, you know what I'm saying. So Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, we'll and, see. And if that doesn't happen, we'll be hearing about it for six years. Yeah, yeah, we definitely will. Uh, here's a bet. It's not a huge game. It's <laughs> six years, yeah. It's Penn State, so maybe just a couple weeks. But uh, this isn't a huge game, but I like the number on this. Uh, Georgia at Tennessee. Uh, it's 20 and a half, and a lot of people might think that's a lot, and and it is. But Georgia has just looked incredibly dominant this year. Their defense, mm. I think uh, seven of their uh, 
seven of their eight games so far this year, they've held their the held the opponent under ten points, which Jeez, is unbelievable. Yeah. So twenty and a half, I would jump on Georgia with that too. Yeah, probably the best defense in the country. Georgia, um, arguably at least. And uh, yeah, I like that line too. Yeah, definitely. And we already talked about Purdue and Ohio State. Yeah. I would jump on that. Another line here that uh, might be enticing to some people is uh, Stanford at Oregon State. Or excuse me. I'm sorry. No, no one gives a shit about that game. <laughs> Maryland at Michigan State. Excuse me. Uh, Michigan State opened as a 14 point favorite there. Now it's down to 13 now all across the board. This is at Michigan State. Uh, I do think the Michigan State is going to come out a little pissed off, a little upset about that loss to Purdue last week. But they did not look good in that lo- in that loss. Mm. They did, they looked they looked lost. They looked they looked overmatched. Uh, I don't even, the final score is forty to twenty nine. I don't even think it was that close. I think it sh- could have easily been a three touchdown uh, win for them. Michigan State they look really good. I think they got a lot of help from the officials in that game against Michigan. As as I've mentioned. Uh, 14 is really big, man. I would take Maryland here to cover that. I don't, I still, I still think Michigan state's going to win, but I think it's gonna be closer to like eight to 10 or something like that. Nice. So, so Chad's got his picks a couple weeks ago. You had some great picks. They were I went three fire. And one. Was it three and one? You or nailed them, one? but you forgot to bet them. <laughs> I'm just a dumbass. And so, so what is your plan, man? Are you going to parlay these? Are you going to do four individual bets? I mean, what, what's your plan? For Saturday, because I feel like if we don't have a plan, it's just it's you're just gonna forget again, man. Dude, I would have went three and one, I think, or four and zero. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, and I'm, it would have been a good week. week. I know that. So this was week, it man, last week or two weeks ago? I think it was last week. Wasn't okay, it? I, don't I think remember. last week was the first week we did college football okay. odds. So yeah, I would have went three and one, or I can't remember if it was last yeah. week or the week before. I would have went three and one or four and zero. Oh, I can't remember. I have to listen to the tape. Uh, this week, I think I'm gonna. I'm, I'm think I'm done with parlays for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna go put you know some pizza money, as you say, on on sprinkle that on some of these games. I'm gonna nice. take Michigan to to win that on the money line, basically. Um, Ohio State. I'm definitely betting that game. I might, maybe I'll do a little two team two game parlay with Michigan and Ohio State there. And I thought I learned my lesson. You never bet against your rivals, mm. and you never bet on the team that you love, you know what mm, I mean? But I still have not learned my lesson. So I'm going to do that this week. Nice. <laughs> and hope and pray that Purdue can knock Ohio state out of the, out of the big 10 race. Or well, they wouldn't knock them out. It'd be a three-way tie at that point, but definitely knock them out of the national championship race. If they lose this game this week, they are done, which would be awesome. So uh, do with what, do what you want with that information. But I, I think that that's a definitely bet Ohio state and Purdue. That that's is way too large one. of a spread. Yeah. That's that yeah, way yeah. too big of a spread. I, I was shocked when I saw that number. Can't believe so it must have been drunk when they when they Purdue made that plus line. Purdue plus twenty and a half is the bet. That's that crazy. I can't too. believe nice. that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to be that big of a blowout. I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. Good obviously, deal. than than Vegas does. Hey everybody, we just want to take a quick second to tell you about Better Help. That's Better H E L P. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? Uh, this is something that a lot of people struggle with. I know, man. You know, mental health is something that uh, isn't taboo to talk about anymore. People are talking about it. It's at the forefront of a lot of conversations, and it should be because a lot of people struggle with this. You know, and uh, it's it's okay to ask to seek help, to talk to other people about it, to get some uh, experts to help you out, so you're not dealing with this for years and years and years. You know, so better help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. What's great is that you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. What's great is they also have a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available to you. Uh, the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. That's 24 hours a day. You'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can see a schedule. Uh, you can uh, schedule weekly video or phone sessions. So you don't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. What's awesome is BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. What's awesome about this, man, is you get to do this in your house. You know what I mean? You don't have to go driving around. You're not going uh, waiting in a waiting room like I said. Um, still be in your pajamas if you want. Be in your drawers. Absolutely. You know? I mean, you might have to talk about that with your therapist. You know, I don't know <laughs> if he or she's going to be comfortable with that. But if they are, you know, maybe put a little blanket over you. No one there has you to go. know. You know? But BetterHelp <laughs> wants you to start living a happier life today. That's betterhelp.com. You can visit their website, read some of their testimonials from real people, um, get an understanding and, and find out what works best for you. They have, a, a, like we said, a bunch of different uh, expertise available. These people are... Uh, professionals in a variety of topics and subjects and problems that you might be experiencing. Um, we've got a special offer for our listeners. If you go to BetterHelp, that's 
dot com forward slash DNP, as in did not play. You're going to uh, get 10% off your first month, which is awesome, man. Heck you yeah. get a 10% off of uh, some therapy. You know what I'm saying? It's a win-win. Uh, and, you get help through therapy and you're saving money. Yeah. People and, around you are probably going to be happier that you and, know, you're getting help too. That's and great. what's awesome about this, man, is that you can you can uh, start taking control of your life today. You know, it's 48 hours. 48 hours from now, you could be onto a, a better version of yourself. It's awesome. Um, and just because you're seeking a therapist doesn't mean you're really, really messed up or anything. Everyone no. has maintenance that they need to go through. Absolutely. And talk to someone about it. Life is difficult, man. It's really hard. It's not easy. Yep. And uh, better help is... Uh, uh, a great resource and a great tool to help you through some of the life struggles and everything. So Absolutely. go to better help. That's H E L P.com forward slash D N P. And you're going to get 10% off your first month. With that being said, you want to go ahead and get us into the NFL. Yeah. Week 10 in the NFL week nine was crazy folks. We had seven teams Massive. that were underdogs outright win and 10 of the 13 dogs covered in week 10. It Massive was upsets. We have been complaining for weeks that all these, Large point spreads were being covered. It was like looking like college football a little bit with yeah. like Alabama going up against uh, Tennessee Tech or some shit. Yeah. And then we had last week with all these massive upsets. No one yeah. saw Buffalo. I mean, imagine how much money you could have made if you throw some money on that. Yeah. If someone had told you that the Jaguars were going to beat the Bills, that would have been a shock. I what if said, someone had told you that the Jaguars were going to only score nine points and beat the Bills and beat the Bills? Yeah, that you could. You know how much money you could have made if you kept the under <laughs> under fifteen or something oh, like that. You know God, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that, that was a, that was a oh, shock. Oh, you would have so. made so much money. Uh, that was that was incredible. I, I would have said that Josh Allen got hurt if that was the case. Yeah, yeah, you know, Some, something happened. Thought. Yeah, several injuries. Yeah, so exactly. a lot of upsets, which means that this week is going to be so intriguing because we yeah. don't know what the hell is going to happen. So let's start yep. going and, through uh, and, some and, of these and a lot of big point spreads, as you guys will see too. Uh, so first up, we've got uh, Baltimore at Miami on Thursday night. Uh, Baltimore is a seven and a half point favorite uh, on the road uh, against Miami. Um, we, we got Baltimore who, by the way, they're going to be without their starting safety, um, for the first time this year, but Miami just doesn't, uh, they just, they just don't impress me. I think they're probably one of the worst five teams in the league. You think that was a fluke win last week? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. A against a, a, a shitty team too. Yeah. Um, now granted with, with Tyrod Taylor in there, I did think Houston was going to put up more of a fight, but it wasn't because Miami was so dominating. You know, Miami made a lot of mistakes in that game. Mm. And so I went away from that game saying, yeah, Miami won, but they weren't super impressive. That said, the seven and a half, I'm probably going to have to take the hook here if, if I'm, if I'm going to lean. I'm not going to bet this game, but in, you know, my pools where I'm forced to bet, I, I, I'll lean Miami seven and a half just because it's, it's so many damn points. That's Thursday a large night. spread. And Baltimore hasn't looked great. Baltimore is a team that has been – Helped out by officiating a lot this year yeah, as well. A lot of close games. A lot of close games. They Go should back have, to that Raiders game week one. They yeah. should have lost. They should have lost probably four games this year at least. Yeah. I think, what are they, six and two right yeah. now? They should have lost at least four games. They should have got beat by the Lions. Uh, they got helped Fucking out on that. Kick. That was that yeah. was awful. Awful, egregious calls in that game as well. But, yeah, I would go with th that same thing. I think Miami will keep it a little bit close. Seven and a half is a lot of points. Yeah. It's at Miami. I don't think Baltimore's looked incredible, appreciably better than yeah. anybody else in, in, the, in their division in the AFC North. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see. I do think that uh, Miami will cover that, though. Seven and a half is a lot. Yeah, we're on the same page there with Aline. Um, Atlanta at Dallas. A lot of people are starting, wow. to, starting to believe in Atlanta. Four and four now, I believe, right? Yeah, they still haven't played too many good teams, but they are um, stacking the wins. And mm -hmm. they beat New Orleans. Granted, New Orleans didn't have their starting quarterback, and their backup quarterback, Trevor Simeon, did not look good. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at what's happening in the NFC, Believe it or not, the Falcons are right in it for a wild card spot. Um, they're quietly, like I said, stacking wins. And then you got Dallas coming off of a, a really disappointing loss that we've talked about already. Um, uh, 10 at some spots, Dallas as a favorite in Dallas again, second straight home game, nine in other spots. That's wow, man. That's a tough, tough game to bet, man. Uh, you got Dan Quinn going up against his old team, mm. uh, team he used to be a head coach for. Good point. It's it's hard, man. It's, it's This is a hard game to cap here because Atlanta has looked pretty good, you know, decent this year, four and four. They're at 500. I don't know too many people that predicted that to happen. I sure as hell didn't. And then Dallas, you got to wonder, is something wrong with Dak? Is he, is, he, is he totally healthy? You and I both said last week that, that would have been a great game to sit him. Obviously, now hindsight is 2020. They definitely should have sat him. Because he he looked like maybe he's not healthy, and yeah. now you got to wonder about the rest of the season. Uh, they've already had their bye week, so they don't have that that luxury anymore. 
Um, nine and a half, ten. Dude, I think I would take Atlanta here. Now, I could be wrong. Dallas comes out. Dak, you know, just took him a week to, to you know, get the, shake the rust off or what have you. But because uh, he didn't play for two weeks. But I don't know, man. This is at Dallas. I think I'm going to take Atlanta to cover that nine and a half, ten is a lot. So you'll take Atlanta plus 10. I'll take Dallas minus nine. Mm-hmm. Um, again, on oddshark.com where you can shop around. I see some nines still. The reasons that I like Dallas, one, I think they're going to be pissed off from last week. Um, you bring up a good point about, you know, Dak maybe being injured. He's saying to the press, at least, that um, his injury had nothing to do with the performance last week. Um, I think he's, I don't know, uh, 90%, 95%. He, he looks okay out there. Um, but again, I like your point about Dan Quinn's former team. If he has an opportunity to rub this in a little bit, um, maybe uh, s- some blitzes at some inappropriate times where you expected him to be in the prevent defense and leave his mark on the game, I think that could happen. Um, don't have a lot of faith in Atlanta. Atlanta's still down Calvin Ridley, so that reduces the chances of a backdoor cover. Um, I like Dallas here in, in, in a blowout. This is kind of a, a statement opportunity to show that last week was just a fluke. Um, next up, we've got the Saints as three-point dogs on the road against the Titans. Dude, the Titans have taken on down... the road, beat the, the Rams last week. The, the the Titans have beaten the Rams, like you just said. They've beaten the Chiefs. Um, they've uh, They had one other huge win. Who was that against? The, Buffalo. Against Buffalo, yeah. The Titans have taken down some, some Goliaths. Mm-hmm. And last week, against the Rams, like you said, on the road, without Derrick Henry. And they still looked really good. That defense was way better than I thought in that game. Um, now, can they keep that momentum going and still look that good without Derrick Henry? I, I was one of the few people that actually picked the Titans. Um, I, I said they could actually win that game outright. And don't be shocked if, if they win, uh, even though the spread was 7.5 last week. Um, I think Tennessee is going to keep this rolling, and I like them uh, minus 3 here. You know, you and I both said last week that we could see New Orleans having a down week because of Trevor Simeon coming in and starting for the first for the first time where he had we you know he was in, he knew he was gonna be a starter, all this stuff. And that's exactly what happened. He didn't look good. I don't nope. think he's gonna look good again this week. I think that he is an average, he's a backup quarterback, dude. And yeah. I don't think that he's gonna lead their uh the Saints to a win over Tennessee on the road. I'm taking Tennessee here in the points. Yeah, we're both on the same side there. Next up, we've got Buffalo at the Jets. Buffalo is a 13-point favorite. Um, line open at, at 13 and a half. I think this line's going to go up. Yeah. I, I think that if you like Buffalo, the time to bet it is now while it's still at 13. I wouldn't be surprised if this was at 14 by kickoff. In terms of betting it, I just I can't touch it. It's too big of a spread. Uh, the Jets are too unpredictable. We don't even know who their starting quarterback's going to be. Uh, the Bills, again, what do you make of, of last week's uh, Cause disastrous effort? Because they've had a couple times where they've, you know, looked really bad, you know what I mean, or haven't gotten it done. Uh, week one against Pittsburgh. Obviously, Pittsburgh's a decent team, but that was at home. They got beat. Didn't look good in that game. Didn't look too good. Had a lot of mistakes in that game against Tennessee. And then last week, getting beat at Jacksonville. Like, what the hell? How pissed off do you got to be if you're a, a Buffalo Bills fan? You seem like a lot of these fans are traveling all over the place to see them play. No matter where they're at, there's a, a torrent of Bills fans in the game. I'd be pissed off if I went to, down to Jacksonville where there ain't shit happening. That's another meth town that we talked about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you go out of Jacksonville, and then you get beat. You put up six points against one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the NFL. I'd be pissed off. This is too unpredictable, and that line is way too big for me. I would not touch this. If I had to pick, I would take Jets to uh, to keep that close. Yeah, I'm not touching it. Let me ask you this, though. What has been the Bills' most impressive win this year? Let, let, me, great, let me break this yeah. down for you. Uh, anytime they've played a good team, they've fucking lost. Uh, that would be, like you said, against the Steelers. Um, again, against the Chiefs. Uh, here's, who they've, uh, here's who they've beat, folks. Tell me if you're impressed by this or not. Uh, my computer just froze on me. Here's who they've beaten. They've beaten the Dolphins, 26 to 11. Does that impress you? No. no. They've beaten Washington, 43 to 21. Does that impress you? No. no. They've beaten the Texans. Granted, it was a blowout in bad weather, 40 to nothing. No. Um, let's see. Who else have they beat? The, the, did you say the Chiefs? Uh, Chiefs beat them, right? I'm sorry. No, they beat the Chiefs. They beat the Chiefs. Okay, yeah. so that would be their a bad Chiefs team. Yeah, thirty eight to ten. Really bad Chiefs. A team. bad Chiefs team is their most impressive win this year. Yeah. Dolphins again, thirty five to nothing. Miami, Washington, Houston, Kansas City. These are your these are your wins, guys. And anytime you've played a good team, you've lost. The Dolphins twice. Yeah. And you lost to the Jaguars. Yep. 
Is it possible that the Bills are really overrated? Yeah, it definitely is because you look at some of these games when they do lose, they don't look great. Put up 16 points against the Steelers. They put up six points against the Jags. Uh, that's that's just uh, – that doesn't you know give me confidence in this team. They yeah. haven't played anybody. They're playing in one of the worst divisions in the league with two terrible, terrible teams in that division. And speaking so of that division, right the Patriots there. are right behind them, Chad. Yeah, yeah, and they look good. They look like they're getting hot at the right time. They beat the hell out of uh, – uh, who did they play this weekend? Uh, uh, Carolina. Patri- yeah, yeah, yep. And so that they covered that easily. Where They went by 18, <laughs> I believe. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, they look like they're getting hot at the right time. It looks like this division is wide open as well. Yeah, no kidding, man. Now would be a good time to get some odds on uh, division yeah, winners. Yeah, because sure. they're only because the P- Pats are only a half game back of the Bills. Bills are five and three. Pats are five and four, um, and they just they just have to look great, man. Uh, they're two and two on the road. Um, they they obviously get the luxury of playing the Jets twice and the Dolphins twice, but uh, this is not a team that I'm going to be putting money down on. I mean, they do have a, a pretty decent schedule moving forward. They got the Panthers again. They got the Falcons, Jets again. Um, yeah, some Jets spots. twice. Yeah, Colts, uh, Saints. Uh, they do have the Buccaneers on the road, and they've got the Pats at home, and then they've got the Pats twice uh, the day after Christmas as well. But they don't have a tough schedule, but this is a team that come to the playoffs. I'm not going to put no money down on them. They're going to make the playoffs, but I'm not going to put money down on them to do any damage in the playoffs for sure. Yeah, I agree. And that, that game against the Saints is on Thanksgiving in New Orleans. I think we're going to see what they're made of. Yeah. Week 12. Yeah. Tampa Bay. Nine and a half or ten point favorites on the road against Washington. Yeah, I would take Tampa Bay in the points here all day long. I think they're going to cover that. I think they're going to win by two touchdowns. They're coming off their bye week. Pissed. Uh, yeah. Coming yeah. off a loss and a bye. Yeah, yeah. Loss and a bye. I think Tom Brady's going to have that team ready to play. Ten points, I would take that. I think they're going to win by two touchdowns. Yep. I, and Gronk's going to be back too, by the yeah. way. Uh, probably still no Antonio Brown, but, Bron- but Gronk's going to be back. I like the Bucs here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacksonville, ten and a half. Or 10-point underdogs, depending on where you uh, do your betting. To Indianapolis, the game's in Indianapolis. These are division rivals. Um, This is going to be my survivor pick of the week here. I think Indianapolis, I know they have extra rest. Um, Jacksonville, yeah, that was impressive beating the Bills. Nobody saw it coming. But your offense is still terrible. Mm -hmm. Your defense kept you in that game, and it was a very impressive effort by your defense. I still don't know how you did it, to be honest. But you only scored nine points, and I'm not super optimistic. On top of that, Trevor Lawrence uh, now has an ankle injury. He's going to play, but isn't going to be 100%. He's probably going to be a little bit less mobile. Uh, a little bit less mobile going up against DeForest Buckner in that Colts defensive line. I like the Colts to definitely win the game here, but I can't touch it at a 10 or 10.5 point spread. Yeah, man. The, the Colts is a team that we talked about a couple of weeks ago is that we could see uh, getting into the playoffs. And we're looking at their schedule right now. They got the Jags this weekend. Um, then they're at Buffalo. They they do have a, a tough stretch over these next two or three games. Jag, Jaguars uh, not uh, withstanding. Uh, they're at Buffalo, and then they got the Bucks uh, coming to Indianapolis. But then it uh, lightens up a little bit. I mean, well, actually, no, it doesn't. They've got a tough-ass schedule, dude. What am I talking about? <laughs> they're, they're at Buffalo. Uh, they got the Bucks coming to the coming to uh, Indianapolis. Then they've got then they're at the Texans. You know, definitely should be able to win that game. Then they got the Patriots, Cardinals, Raiders, and then they finish the season up with the Jags. Um, this is a must win for them this week. You know what I mean? And I think, that, like you said, they're coming off the the bye. They got a little, or not bye, but they got a little extra rest. Yep. And so I think they'll be ready to play. Ten and a half is a lot, though, man. I don't know that I, I would bet that, you know, to be quite honest with you, especially Jacksonville's looking like they got a little bit of a pulse lately. Um, if I had to, I guess I'd go Indianapolis with this, but I do expect them to win. Next up, we've got Detroit at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a nine-point favorite at home against the Lions. Um, I'm going to take the Lions here, plus nine, but I got a little caveat for you. I looked at the weather, and it looks like there's some rain right now scheduled before this game and some rain after this game. If that forecast changes and it's raining, Jared Goff does not play well in the rain. Um, His hands are too small. He fumbles the ball. He can't get a good grip on the ball. So if we get to game time and it looks like sloppy conditions, I would be all over the Steelers in sloppy conditions. Keep an eye on the weather. Yeah. Jared Goff cannot play in the rain. I feel like it's the best kept secret in the NFL. There's a few people out there who know this is the case. It's not that publicized. Jared Goff cannot play in, in wintry or cold, wet situations. So keep an eye on that weather. Otherwise, if I had to lean, I'd, uh, I'd go Detroit here. 
That's because he got them little baby hands. They're tiny. Yeah, them little tiny. I wonder if his wife like said like talks shit about him when they get in arguments and stuff. <laughs> and she's like, he's like, you know what? You know, I'm tired of this shit. I'm always posting selfies on Twitter. And she's like, well, you got stupid baby hands. You know what I mean? <laughs> He, he knows that's like a knock on him coming into the draft and everything. Dude, He's like, yeah. this bitch. Yeah. I'm gonna get I, I think he likes playing in that dome in Detroit. And uh, we'll see We'll see what yeah, happens if I, he gets in some some sloppy conditions. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised this line is so so small. I guess, you know, that speaks to not having super, a whole lot of confidence in Pittsburgh. But I think they're going to cover this. It's at Pittsburgh. Like you said, if it does get sloppy, they got a good defense. They can run the ball a little bit more, uh, a little bit better than uh, Detroit can. So I would take uh, Pittsburgh here. Yeah, I saw some tens last week before Pittsburgh struggled to win on Monday night. So I think what's happened is uh, the books are, are a little less confident in Pittsburgh. I am too after Monday. I mean, that yeah. was uh, they won, but I, I lost respect for Pittsburgh on Monday night. And they've got a short week. Keep that in mind. This is important. Pittsburgh is on a short week because they played Monday night and Detroit is off a of bye. So you've got max rest versus minimum rest here. and. Um, <laughs> Last That's thing. probably why the spread is so small. Yeah, that has a big piece to do with it. But look at the head coaching matchup. This is, in my opinion, Mike Tomlin, one of the top five best coaches in the yeah. league, probably against one of the, you know one of the worst five coaches in the league um, for Detroit. And so, head coaching matchup favors Pittsburgh big time, and they're at home. So I, I, I get the appeal to Pittsburgh. What's crazy for if you're a Detroit fan, this is not uh, this doesn't you know bode well. Is that you have zero wins and one. Uh, coach crying in a press conference after the game. <laughs> Dan Campbell's cried more times in a press conference than the than the Lions have won games. That's yeah, not good. That's, <laughs> that's not that's good. Really sad. It is sad. It is very man. sad. It makes me want to cry. You know. Uh, but uh, gosh. yeah, man, I, I wouldn't. I, I would. This isn't a game I really want to want to bet on. But I would take Pittsburgh. Next up, this is a great example of why you got to shop around. We've got Cleveland. Mm -hmm. They are either a pick 'em. Or a one point dog or a one and a half point dog mm -hmm. at New England. Um, keep in mind some news dropped recently that Chubb has tested positive. Cleveland stud yeah, running back yep. has tested positive for COVID. Uh, so it's unclear. It looks like he does have a chance to play depending on how the testing works out. Um, but what makes me nervous, Chad, when you see a, a, a positive test early in the week is that there could be other cases. Yeah. that Come out of this is someone else in the in the Browns running back room. Are we going to find out that they test positive? on Wednesday or Thursday, et cetera. So we'll have to see how that goes. Yeah, it doesn't give you confidence going into this game, man. Obviously, Nick Chubb is one of the best running backs, if not the best running back in the league right now that Derrick Henry's out. Um, this is a pick -em. With that being said, yeah, you're right. There's probably going to be some other guys that, that end up being out because of that. The Browns looked really good last week. We said on the week before that we're going to find out a lot about who was to blame for the early season struggles, first half season struggles. Um, with the Browns, OBJ's gone. <clears throat> they responded incredibly well. What's yeah. crazy is that they, uh, I think they only at one point in the game, uh, against Cincinnati last week, they had ran 30 plays and had 33 points or 31 points or something like mm -hmm. that at that time. So that's crazy. <laughs> Obviously, you know, the pick six helps the fumble and everything like that helps. Um, that was a little bit of a fluke. I think that the, that, that game would have been a lot closer, uh, had, you know, a couple of those, uh, the ball, you know, went a, a different way at some point in that game. Uh, but I definitely think Cleveland's a better team. Now going against New England, at New England, Nick Chubb's possibly out. I probably would take New England here. Yeah, I'm going to take New England here too. I, I did put a bet in already at New England at minus one when I heard that Chubb was uh, testing positive. Um, I, I want to see if I can interest you in this though, Chad. I know you like New England here, but what if we look at one of these sites on Odd Shark that has a, a, the Browns at one and a half, throw six points on that. So you got Cleveland seven and a half. And then pair that with uh, Michigan plus seven. Michigan plus seven, Browns seven and a half. You got a lot of points to play with there in both games. Yeah, yeah. It's not a bad idea, man. I'd probably jump on that if I, like I didn't have such a bad record of betting. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we got the Vikings at the Chargers. Uh, Vikings are two and a half or three point dogs. That three is really important, guys. 15% of NFL games end by exactly three points. Two and a half or three points on the road to the Chargers. Um, obviously, if you like the Chargers, go with the the two and a half. If you like Minnesota, go with the three. This line's probably going to move quite a bit before kickoff as well. Um, the Chargers run defense is the weakness of that team. Mm -hmm. They've been exposed the last couple of weeks, especially against New England is when we really saw it. And now you're going up against Dalvin Cook, who's, who's one of the best running backs in the league, in my opinion, top five best running backs in the league. 
Um, I think Minnesota uh, is a, a live dog here. And uh, I like Minnesota uh, for a little money line bet. It's crazy because Minnesota has had a really good defense, you know. And also on top of that, a lot good of their pass games. pass rush. Yeah. A lot of their games have been incredibly cu- close this year, this year as well. As you yeah. said, uh, they can run the ball. They got one of the best running backs in the in the league with Dalvin Cook. He had a great uh, great game last week. Uh, dude, this is gonna be my upset of the week. I don't. You just stole it from me. I just I? said Vikings money line. Now, well, oh, it's your upset of the week. Well, okay, okay. I wasn't paying attention when you said that. To be honest, <laughs> I was kind of zoned out thinking about what I'm about to eat after this after this show. Typing over. with one finger over yeah. there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm used to that. <laughs> you little one handed typing, you know, <laughs> little one hand uh, keyboard playing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crazy, man. Like all their games have been close this year, save for uh, beating That's true beating uh, Seattle by thirteen. Um, they have a look at this dude. They have a three point loss to the Bengals in overtime. They've got a one point loss to the Cardinals. They they beat uh, Seattle by thirteen. A seven point loss to the Browns at home. Uh, a two point win over Detroit, nineteen seventeen. A six point win over uh, Carolina in overtime. And then they just lost to, or excuse me, uh, they lost to Dallas by four. And then they lost last week again in overtime uh, to the Ravens. God, so, is, is Pete Carroll coaching that team? It sounds like what the Seahawks are always doing in close games one way or another, either winning close ones or losing close ones. They've already, yeah, they've already had two overtime yeah. games and a lot of games decided by six or seven points or less. Um, this is going to be my upset of the week. Forget about what Tony said. I actually told him about this. He was like, dude, yeah. what the hell? I was thinking Chargers, man. You know what I mean? He he missed this in the, in the four hours of time he puts in researching this shit. I, I hipped him to this. So go ahead and take my upset of the week, folks. Vikings over Chargers. I like it. Keep in mind, too, Daniel Hunter's uh, going to be out for Minnesota. Probably their best pass rusher. Yeah. Uh, so that does hurt a little bit. I still like Minnesota plus three. It's just a matchup thing. I like it. Uh, Carolina. At Arizona, Arizona's a nine and a half or 10 point favorite at home to the Panthers. Uh, Panthers lost another offensive lineman this week. Uh, the Panthers, I think, are in trouble. Yes, they got Christian McCaffrey back, uh, but they are in trouble. There's a lot of miles on that odometer as well. We yeah. said that with LeBron. There's a lot of miles. They've, they've really run him into the ground, man. It's yeah. really unfortunate because can he stay healthy, man, for the rest of his career? You look uh, at the history of NFL running backs yeah. who've gotten that number of carries. Um, every one of them just drops off of a cliff. And, and he's I a little worry. dude. He's not huge. Yeah. He's a little guy. So yep. um, that's that's uh, unfortunate because he was one of the most electric players in the NFL for a couple of years. Yeah. Ten points is a lot, but Arizona should be getting Kyler Murray back. They should be getting DeAndre Hopkins back. A.J. Green. A.J. Green. Um incredibly impressive win against the 49ers this week. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in the 49ers. I don't think they're a great team. We're going to talk about them a little bit later because I want to get your opinion on that as well. But big win on the road last week. Divisional yeah. matchup beating uh, San Francisco and the manner in which they did. It wasn't really a close game. It felt yep. like they they kind of manhandled them a little bit. 10 points is a lot, but I'm going to take Arizona at home to uh, cover that 10-point spread. Yeah, I don't love it enough to bet it, but I'm going to certainly lean Arizona if I've got it here just because uh, lack of confidence in, in Carolina for sure. <clears throat> uh, next up, you heard Benjamin Albright talk about his opinion on this game. He liked uh, Denver here. There's still some two and a halfs out there. Uh, the two and a halfs that I'm seeing are juiced up to minus 125. So that's an indication that they're going to be going up to three. So if you like Denver, grab that now. Um, if you like Philadelphia, there are some threes. I think this one could keep going up. Um, I like Denver to cover, uh, not just because of what Benjamin said, but I liked it before then Philadelphia, they have flashes, but I, I think they're also a bottom six or seven team in the league. Yeah, I totally agree. They've, you know, a couple of games this year, they've, they've looked decent, but, uh, this is at Denver, a uh, mile high. Um, I, I think as we talked to Benjamin, I'm gonna take Denver in this game, man. Hopefully that maybe they've turned a corner now that Von Miller's there. There's a little bit more accountability, a lot less goofing around and everything like that. So maybe things have changed for them. Uh they've got everything in front of them, man. They can still win the division. There's very much alive in that. They're very much alive winning the division, making the playoffs, all that. So uh, I think they're gonna come out juiced up. Philadelphia, obviously, I don't think has a chance to make the playoffs this year. Denver does. And uh I'm not too confident in their quarterback, but at the same time, this is at Denver. Seems like they're a little bit of a different team. And coming off that huge win last week, I think they're going to uh, parlay that and, and win again this week as well. Yeah, and Denver's always a tough place to play. I like Denver a lot here. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Seattle, three and a half, up to five-point dogs, depending on where you where you go. Uh, 
at Green Bay. We don't know for sure Aaron Rodgers is going to play. He still needs to uh, test negative in order to play on Sunday. Uh, looks like Seattle is definitely going to be getting Russell Wilson back. Um, I like the idea of taking Seattle plus five, knowing that it's not even a guarantee that Rodgers is going to play. So what if you take Seattle plus five and you find out he's not going to play? You're going to get great closing line value. And then if Rodgers does play, plus five on Seattle with Russell Wilson still isn't a bad bet anyways. Yeah, and Russell's so, supposed to be back this week. so Absolutely. So um, I, I like Seattle plus five if you're going to bet it early in the week for sure. Yeah, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to play. I don't know any. I don't have like inside information, obviously. Yeah, but, a greater than 50% chance, probably yeah. 70 or 80% chance, I would think, yeah. So if he does play, I think that they're going to they're gonna, – it might be a blowout. I think Green Bay might be one of the best teams, if not the best team in the NFL, to be honest with you, man, which is crazy because it didn't yeah. look like that early in the season. But, you know, you saw how bad they were without Aaron Rodgers. If I'm the Chiefs, man, I'm not happy about that win last week. 13-7, to seven, it felt like uh, there's no way in hell they win that game if Aaron Rodgers is playing. If Aaron Rodgers is playing, that's probably a two or three touchdown victory yeah. for the Packers. Uh, Kansas City just doesn't look great. We're going to talk about them next, but uh, Green Bay at three and a half, uh, I would take that. Anywhere from three and a half to five, uh, I would take that, man. Yeah, here's the thing with the Chiefs, and like you said, we're talking about them next. They're two and a half point favorites on Sunday Night Football against the Raiders. People have the impression that the Chiefs' defense is really bad. It's actually been greatly improved the last mm -hmm. two or three weeks, and I've been surprised to see this because I got in this habit of saying the Chiefs' defense sucks, the Chiefs' defense sucks, and then someone called me out on it. They're like, actually, look at the last couple of weeks. And I did, and their numbers were actually greatly improved. And so while the Chiefs' defense is not a top-tier defense, they've been averaged, maybe even slightly above average the last couple of weeks. It's their offense that's been a problem. This is going to be a fascinating Sunday night football game. Chiefs-Raiders, enormous implications in the AFC West. We already talked with Benjamin Albright about how that division is wide open. Um, it's going to be fascinating. In Vegas, which is always kind of a... Funny things happen in Vegas, and this game is in Las Vegas. Who knows if Patrick Mahomes is going to be be out partying the night before? Um, he some, looks hungover. Some, some almost, people, some people might get the Vegas flu um, <laughs> in uh, in Vegas. Dog, he looks hungover in almost every game this year for some reason. Yeah, he's he's got kind of a interesting demeanor. Uh, he he's he's looked hungover in almost every game, dude. I mean, yeah. if if my brother was Jackson Mahomes, I'd probably be hungover as well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that dude is a jackass. No how is he doubt. how is this dude getting on the on the side? And does he even know what the hell's going on in the game? Yeah. Him and his wife were over there too bright. over there TikToking and shit while Patrick Mahomes like laying concussed on the ground and everything. Yeah. One thing I do want to speak to about oh, so the the Chiefs defense has been good and everything like that. So let's go through their last four opponents though, okay? They were at Washington they won 31 to 13. Then uh Tennessee beat the hell out of them 27 to 3. The next week they play uh the Giants at home. They beat the Giants 20 to 17, held them to 17 points. And they played an Aaron Rodgers less Packers team last week and held them to seven points. So yes, they have been good, but who the hell who did they, they play? Yeah, Name yeah. one quarterback for any of those teams that, that strikes fear. Does Daniel Jones? I nope. mean, obviously he's a, he's had a much better year than not Jordan Love. Not yep. Jordan Love, obviously. Um, Washington. I don't even know who the hell their quarterback is. What's his name? Uh, uh, Heineke. Heineke. Yeah. Taylor Heineke. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they might have been good, but they're playing some of the drugs, drugs of of uh the NFL. Yeah. Played the Eagles two weeks before that, before uh Washington as well. So they haven't really been playing great teams. And I want to know: Has the Chiefs been an underdog in any game this year? Probably the Bills game, I'd imagine. But that was at home, so point, who knows? Good point. Yeah, and they're terrible ATS. They are not a good ATS team. Yeah. This year. So in this, uh, you're talking about it's at it's at Las Vegas. Um, Vegas is getting two and a half. So much drama in that locker room, yeah. dog. Yeah. I mean, you got the rug situation. They just cut that cornerback because he's making death threats with Doug, freaking guns on video. Mike like, Mayock is one of the worst general managers oh, in man. football. We I have felt a whole that. Show talking about yeah, that we guy. really could. I could talk about him for a while because his his drafts have been atrocious. Every single year, they they reach on some guy that's like a second or third round grade, and they reach for him in the top twenty of the draft or something like that. It's unbelievable that this guy still has a job. Dude, the Raiders, I posted a, an article to my Twitter, 2019, an article of Mayock saying like, we need some high character guys. Yeah, yeah. This is the organization that yeah. brought you Richie Cognito back after yeah. he was like belligerent and losing his mind yeah. in like gyms out in public. But we all know about the John Gruden scandal is that high character. Henry Ruggs driving 150 miles per hour. 
um, it, w- and killing someone in a, a dog. fiery death and their dog. Yeah. Like, uh, it's so not high character. And then this cornerback who's literally making death threats with weapons. Hey. Like, you can't help but laugh at the ridiculousness yeah. Of saying you're high character, okay, yeah. you're high character, and then this is what you're delivering us. Oh, and I forgot Antonio Brown. They brought him yeah, in yeah. too. Is Antonio Brown high character? Do you want a friggin' list of all the shady things he's done? Only if he's with and living with Tom Brady when yeah, Tom Brady babysitter. can like babysit him and stuff. Exactly. What's funny is that you say that is that Mike Mayock said that they wanted high character guys. Damon Arnett uh, went to the Ohio State University. Um, had a bunch of character uh, flaws coming into the mm. season. He was actually recruited by Michigan. I remember his recruitment as a high school player. He was recruited by Michigan, one of the top cornerbacks in the country at that time. Michigan abruptly pulled out of his recruiting. A lot of people were wondering, what the hell's going on? Why did they mm. pull out of his recruiting? Of course, he ends up going to Ohio State because Ohio State don't give a shit. You can you can do whatever the hell. You can carry around AK-47s in your car. And you're still going to start <laughs> on Saturday. They don't give a damn. But uh, Maurice Claret. Uh, so they knew he had character issues coming in before they even drafted him. And in fact, I read an article by, uh, where they quoted Mike Mayak as saying that they knew he had character issues, but they talked to the Ohio State staff and Ohio State staff assured him that if X, yeah, Y, and Z, yeah. they did X, Y, and Z, that he was going to be able to do that. He hasn't even produced when he's been playing. And then he's out here not even going to practice, not working out or anything like that, making rap videos and threatening people on Instagram live. Yeah, the Ohio State staff (laughs) assured him. That's like when I see drug companies create their own studies and say, don't worry, our products are safe. You know, their own studies that they created. The Ohio State staff said everything's fine. So, okay, I feel better now. Totally good. Yeah, they told you what you wanted to hear. And and you, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the school that hired Urban Meyer and Jim Tressel and Earl Bruce says that he's a high character guy. So don't worry. He's yeah. good guys. You know, the guy that, that the school that had a, a head coach punch a player during a game, not on his team <laughs> either on the opposing team, a Clemson player, punch a player, Jim Trestle, you know, the entire scandal with him. They tried to do everything in their power to keep him there. And urban Meyer who already had a history of, of uh, shady ass shit. They bring him on. No questions asked. And then all of a sudden, Hey, he gets fired because essentially fired because of some shady ass shit. Who to thunk it, you know? So uh, Mike Mayock, I don't know how that guy has a job. If I were coming in here every week and I was just shit in the bed and not doing anything and all my and everything, I wasn't getting interviews. I wasn't uh, doing my homework. I, you would fire me. Incompetence. <laughs> Incompetence. So yeah. I'm going to say with all that being said, I'm still going to take Vegas. <laughs> Vegas two and a half. I'm going to take the Chiefs here. I think uh, I think the defense is looking a little improved. You bring up a good point about them not really playing anybody. Um, I think they're uh, in prime time. I think their offense is going to turn it around. It's going to be probably my favorite game of the week to watch. I can't wait for yeah. Sunday night. Next up, this is like this is painful to talk about. Uh, Rams yeah. four point favorites at San Francisco. San Francisco. I-, I was just caught off guard last week, man. They played the Cardinals tough. They got back George Kittle. They got back a couple linebackers, and the Cardinals were down their their best weapons. And San Francisco just shit the bed. They looked terrible. They had two huge fumbles after big gains by two of their best players, um, they just looked overmatched against Colt McCoy. Like, it's it's funny hearing those words come out of my mouth. The 49ers looked overmatched against <laughs> Colt McCoy. That's something it's no crazy. one said since the Big 12 days, you know? I think the last Seriously. person that said that was Oklahoma. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, it, it's crazy. Um, I do, believe it or not, and, and this isn't a homer thing, guys, because I've bet against the 49ers several times this year. I've given you picks against the 49ers several times. But I do like the 49ers plus four here for a couple reasons. One, Shanahan plays McVay really tough. Um, there have been times where the 49ers have been big, big underdogs against the Rams and they've shocked people. And two, that team needs to be motivated right now. This is an absolute must win if you want even a semblance of, of hope uh, for the playoffs. And I think the 49ers are going to show up in this game. They're going to be pissed. Um, I like the 49ers plus four here. It's crazy, man. They're sitting at the bottom of the divisional standings, three and yeah. five, along with Seattle. Uh, they are already, you know, they're four games out of first place in the NFC West. They're three games behind the Rams. I'm kind of surprised this line is so low, to be honest with you. I think probably some of that is obviously the Rams getting beat last week. But four, man, I, don't, I just don't have com- – I'm sorry to say, brother, I just don't have confidence oh, in, in Kyle, Kyle Shanahan. Like yeah. I think he – I don't know. I don't know what, what Jed York and them, they're going to do, you know what I'm saying, because – Lynch doesn't seem like he he's you know it seems like come on dog wh- where are you at what are you doing uh yeah. you might it, it looks so right now at least year one obviously these things can change as they have with like Josh Allen and Baker Mayfield 
But it looks like right now they picked the wrong quarterback. Mac Jones yeah. is looking really, really good. Yep. Uh, just eight games into his career. And Trey Lance, they didn't, he can't even get on the field over Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, yeah, Shanahan is not looked well, but you also just signed him to a five-year contract. And there's really no better head coaches out there. So I think you're stuck with Shanahan, whether you like it or not. Um, yeah. What about I, I, like Eric Bieniemy or something like that? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I wasn't really thinking about coordinators on other teams. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how five, do you? I mean, Bieniemy has got the play calling down, obviously, and, but that's like Shanahan's bread and butter, anyways. You know what I mean? It's, I, I yeah, it would all come down to interviews. Can that guy? I don't think team, that. I don't think that. Uh, I I don't think that San Francisco is going to fire him this year, Shanahan. I think they're going to give him at least one more year. Yeah, but I hate to say it, man. I just don't like the guy. He just like he just rubs me the wrong way. He seems like just like a pouty little dude. Like yeah, obviously he was you know rich growing up and everything like that. It seems like he's kind of like a little entitled. Our guy Grant Cohn uh, had an awesome. Did you see what Grant asked him in the presser? Uh, I did. Yeah. yeah, that was hilarious. He asked. Yeah, that's what Grant does, by the way. Yeah, Grant that is <laughs> Grant is the shit, man. Shout out to Grant Cohn. Yeah, we had him on the show. You can look up that episode as well. Great yeah, episode. Yeah, Sports Illustrated. Uh, for the 49ers, his dad's an awesome writer as well, Lowell Cone. Cone. Uh, he asked Shanahan and his presser, "What do 49ers fans have to be to feel like optimistic about this year?" And Shanahan wouldn't answer the question. He said it with some evidence, though. He's yeah. like, "You guys have lost ten of your last eleven games at home." Blah mm-hmm. blah blah. What are the? Why should 49ers be optimistic about the direction this is headed? And he basically punted on the on the. Question. Shanahan was like, "I don't think we need to be making like big statements like that about the direction of the blah blah blah." No, no you do. And yeah. Grant said, "Yo, you do." You know, he said on Twitter, "No, you do." And I yeah. think that uh, he's just trying to avoid. That's a you know, you want to see people take accountability, man. He should have yeah. came up there and said, "Yeah, dude, I haven't gotten it done." You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been shitty. I've been terrible. The things I'm trying aren't working out. Our quarterback situation. He said a little bit of that yeah. not in that question. He he said a little bit of that. He is taking some responsibility, but I wish he was taking more. <laughs> Last year it was injuries. This year, I mean, I guess a little bit of injuries. Some you know? injuries, but I mean, there's also direct things that you can look at. Listen, I'm going to say it again. The Cardinals were down their biggest weapons. You got your weapons back. How do you play the Cardinals tough? when they've got their weapons and then several weeks later when they don't have their weapons and you have yours back, you get worse. How do you regress in three weeks? That's coaching. That's coaching. And at home. Preparation. And at home. Yeah, that was another thing. So how do you actually get worse in that short period of time? I said this on Twitter too. They were out coached by Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury in that game got a 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. The head coach did. So they were out-coached by the coach who got a (laughs) 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Which is something you never see. Only Jim Harbaugh gets those, which he has. He has gotten those (laughs) at Michigan. But uh, but yeah, so I like the 49ers plus four here. Uh, I'm gonna if, take they, the Rams. if they let me down, I will not bet on them again for the rest of the year, I promise. Yeah, I'm going to take the Rams. I think there's going to be a statement game. I think they're going to come out and establish themselves as one of the leaders in that division. It'll be a two-team race in that division. And dude, if you do have an easy schedule rest of the way, though, I will say oh, this. Oh yeah, the Niners still have the Jaguars. They have the Texans. They've got the Titans. Well, I mean, the Titans are good, but... Yeah, you've got the um, Vikings at home, uh, Jags, yeah. Seahawks, Bengals, Titans. Obviously, they're good. Falcons yeah. at home. Texans at home, and then they're on the road to the Rams to finish the season. But they've already had their bye week, so it's tough to like regroup. How are they going to like <clears throat> make that happen? It just um, seems like they didn't have a plan coming into the season in terms of yeah, the quarterback. Yeah. To be honest, yeah, with that's you. exactly what happened. It seems like they they that you you sold your your future for this uh you know this kid who went to a low level college you know not even D one mm-hmm. who only really played for a season to be honest there. You sold your future for him. I'm not saying he's not going to be good, but we haven't seen anything from him. You well, know? Chad, you say they sold their future. I was looking at this. If the season ended today, one of those first round picks that they they sold is actually the number nine overall pick right now. Wow. So Because the 49ers are doing so terrible. Now, yeah. they didn't see that coming. They thought they were going to have a winning season and those those draft picks were actually going to be uh, not as valuable. But yeah, it just doesn't look good. Who do they owe that pick to? The, to Miami? Uh, Miami, yeah. 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 Wow, so Miami. Miami's Miami's rooting. Miami Dolphin fans are rooting hard for the 49ers to continue losing because, hey, who knows? That could be a, a, a top 10 pick at the end of the year. Yeah, they get some help for Deshaun Watson, who they'll probably end up having. Yeah, eventually. Um, yeah. But sure. yeah, man. So that's the recap of, of uh, the NFL. Uh, yeah, great show today, man. I mean, the NFL season is crazy right now. Um, I appreciate your insight with the, the college football stuff. Great pick with uh, taking Purdue over Ohio State. I like that a lot. And our interview, our interview with Benjamin was awesome too, man. Going back to that, dude, 
such great insight into the Von Miller uh, drama. I mean, you go on most websites right now and they're like, there might be a rumor about Von Miller's Halloween party impacting, you know, his decision to leave. Ben cleared some stuff up. It's not the reason that he left, but there was some drama involved in it. Uh, he said that it was a little bit overblown, but I like the details that he provided with the $3,800. Dude. He knew so much about it. He knew um, everything. He knew yeah. like uh, he knew who was performing. He knew Quavo was performing. <laughs> yeah. He knew. I, I'm going to be surprised if he knew what kind of candy was out. I want to ask Ben, were you at this party, dog? What's going on, man? How you know all this shit? He's like, yeah, strippers came in, you know, about 45 minutes in. You know, uh, Von Miller sat down on this throne-like chair, you know, and he was just eating Swedish fish the whole time, you know. Now, this dude knew way too much. Ben, are you sure you weren't there, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Did you drop thirty eight hundred for this for this uh, party as well? You're a little pissed off that some people didn't pay for it, you know? Oh shit, that shit's hilarious. <laughs> no, man, I went with Bass Ben. I'm sure he was there. <laughs> but yeah, great interview with Benjamin Albright. Make sure you follow him on uh, Twitter at Albright NFL. Awesome insider information from that guy. And uh, he doesn't hold back, man. He'll go after some yeah. people, which is awesome. I love that. Hey, and follow us on Twitter as well at DMP CD Show. Um, on Instagram at DMP CD Sports. Um, please Facebook. give us some on oh, Facebook as well at DMP CD Sports. Thumbs up on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, etc. Um, we are growing quickly, and we appreciate your support. Yeah, definitely. And before we go, let's tell people about Odd Shark. Oddshark.com is your free source for the latest odds from leading authorities, including expert editorial content, the hottest sports news, detailed matchup picks, and depth expert analysis. And it's always free, absolutely free. Another thing that I didn't even know about on Odd Shark, which I just discovered when I was on here, is that at the top of the screen, it'll show you the odds for these games, college football, NFL, all that stuff. But then it'll also tell you which way the public is betting. So yeah, you can I love see that. a little breakdown. Uh, like For example, it's got a, uh, we've got a Akron and Western Michigan. 63% of the public is betting uh, Akron. To yeah, cover. and let, let me give you a little hint here. <laughs> If you find if you always constantly find yourself yeah. betting the games that the public's betting yeah. on, you're going to be a losing better. Yeah. Because if all the games that the public's on won, then the sports books would not be making money. Yeah, exactly, man. And so you definitely want to check that out. Maybe look at that and say, "Hey, I don't want to bet this way." You know what I mean? Exactly. Like a great example is Cincinnati's playing South Florida on Friday, and they are 23 and a half point favorites, and 64 percent of the public is going with South Florida to keep it mm. within 23 points. So interesting. It is interesting, man. So make yeah. sure you give us a follow. Check out oddshark.com for uh, all that information. You're going to get some great articles on there as well. It's going to uh, get you hip to any uh, upcoming events, let you know which way to, to bet and everything like that. You don't just have to bet sports. You can bet uh, Oscars. You can bet Grammys, all that other stuff as well. Yeah. We appreciate you guys watching the show. Give us a follow at DMPCD Show on Twitter, at DMPCD Sports on every other platform. Also go to hotpotmedia.com. You can check out all of, their, all of our past episodes along with a bunch of awesome uh, other podcasts uh, covering all topics. Uh, we've got some new stuff that Hot Pie is going to be releasing from some, yeah. some new people, really exciting celebrities and stuff like that. Yeah. So make sure you give them a follow. Uh, check them out on uh, our on, newsletter is on hotpiemedia.com as well. Yeah. Sign up for that. Yeah, Thank definitely. you all so much. Yeah, we appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Please tell your friends about the show. For Tony, I am Chad. We'll see you guys next week. Peace out. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes and all of our other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home online at hotpiemedia.com, the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts.